welcome back to the channel guys so it is me ad's move for today guys we'll do an afcon reaction to group d games and group e games so we're gonna start first with group d we got here algeria 2 burkina faso 2 algeria man um they rescued a late point a very very valuable point because they were on the cusp of losing this game and if they had lost this game so much pressure in that game against Mauritania. now there already is pressure but now it's a position where they're unbeaten they still can do this but now they probably can't top the group anymore they probably can't so algeria man they created chance in this game um obviously buendia the main talisman for algeria strikes again um, we'll get to that in a bit but that first goal man for breaking up fossil man wow what a header that was for Kanate. beautiful cross into the box and it was i think was top soba man yeah abdul Fasal top soba not the center back one the winger top soba and it almost reminded me of Van Persie's goal. Van Persie's goal against, um, um, was it Spain, the World Cup? I think it was 2014. It was almost, um, you know, it was like that in some ways. And referee initially talked it off, um, but after reviewing with VAR, he gave the goal. You have to give credit to Algeria. They did fall back in the second half. A great, great cross in from Vendia to equalize, um, to make it 1-1. And at this point, you're thinking, okay, Algeria's back in this from the close range, from a great set piece there. And then I think he had another chance to score afterwards, just a few minutes afterwards, and he failed to hit it. Let me see if I can show you guys a shot right here. 53rd minute. That's a huge, huge chance. Go wasting. And Burkina Faso, man, is a team that is very resilient. They're very, they're very, very, they know how to score goals. They're very difficult. So as you can see in the 58th minute, there was a block here, miss here, 64th. And then finally, they got a penalty here. 71st minute. The penalty was given away by Nuri. Abnori, a Wolves player, an upstep, um, Triore, and Triore scores to make it. Bretton Triore scored to make it 2 1. Remember, he scored in the last game against Mauritania in late stoppage time to give um, Burkina Faso a crucial three points. And then afterwards, um, Algeria kept pushing. Buendia had another chance there. And then obviously, Slamani had the chance, 86th minute. Triore, 87th. And then the 94th minute. And then finally, from a great, um, from the corner there, Buendia scores again to make it 2 all. So for Algeria, man, um, defensively, they were not very great on the day. I think uh, they were very, very uh, suspect. And I think for Burkina Faso, man, this is a good, solid team, man. This is a team that can take the game to you. And for Algeria, man, they got to be more clinical with the final third. You can see how good they were in the game. They had 15 shots, 4 on target. They need to get more on target, man. They need to get more chances on target. For Burkina Faso, they were clinical with the chances of 6 shots, 3 on target. And we're generally pretty good, man. So, you know, you have to give credit to um, Burkina Faso for help, um, holding on to a massive uh, holding, you know, to get a point from this game. And then they were expected to probably lose this game. So, for Algeria, man, very, very disappointing. I expected more from them. They didn't show up really the first half. The first half was bad. I mean, you can see right here they had only four shots, one on target. It was terrible. And, um, yeah, like I said, man, that goal really woke up. I mean, it's kind of frustrating that... um. And I think I read this um, somewhere. Someone was telling me whenever Algeria needs to score in the last 10 minutes, they usually don't. So this is actually one of the rare occasions where they actually got the goal they needed to get in the last 10 minutes. But yeah, for Algeria, man, it's looking bad for them. They're on two points right now. And their final game is against Martinia. If they win their final game, they're through to round 16. But if they don't win it, they're out. I think they're out. Because even with the draw, it doesn't really... I think even a draw isn't going to be enough. And obviously, if they lose, they're pretty much out as one of the best third place teams. Moving on to the other game we got here is um, Angola 3, Mauritania 2. Wow, this was a fantastic game. One of the best games in this year's AFCON. And um, it was just a fantastic game. I really, really did enjoy this game. And it was a very good game. Angola, man. I take it, bow, man. So that first goal from Gelson, man. Very, very, um, this scrappy goal from the, uh, I think, for some set piece. I think goalkeeper should have done better. Niasa, I think he should have done better there. And then Amar, man. Take a flipping bow, Amar. He it did a Maradona-esque dribbling. The way he dribbled past the defense was absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. It was like Messi run. It was like the Messi versus, um, what is it called, Getafe. Um, the Ankara Messi, Ankara Messi. It was almost like that. The way he was dribbling past the players, I was like, wow, what a goal. And the second goal from Gola, um, you know, it came from, obviously, Gelson. I think Gelson also had another chance to score um, just before halftime. Um, he missed his chance. He should have scored there. And then Martini also had made 
almost scored before halftime. Very, very good save for Neblo. And then, obviously, the second half, man, Gelson, Gelson scores to make it 2-1 to, um, what is it called? To um, Angola. Um, very, very good build-up play right there, regular play. It was a great, great finish on that. And then the second goal, third goal they scored was a very good, very good position. I believe Fafana was at fault. I think he actually got dispossessed in the midfield, and um, they actually managed to... He got by. He was terrible for that second goal. I think he got dri um, dribble passed. And the third goal, man, was scored from a tight angle. Uh, very, very tight. Good ultra scored. And I believe this guy was also dribble passed. Get Sama for the goal. And then and Martine did score another curling goal in the 58th minute. Very, very good goal from outside the box. A very, very good finish on the top left corner to make it 2-3 uh, to give them some hope. But ultimately, it wasn't quite enough as... Um, Angola kept persisting, kept pushing, and um, yeah, they managed to get the win at the end. So for Angola, man, this is a huge, huge result for them. Martini, I'm so happy for them to score, at least score in the AFCON, because I believe it's the first time they've scored two goals, um, two open play goals ever in their AFCON history, so that's very, very good for them. But yeah, as I said, man, the second half kind of died out. It wasn't as good as the first half, but yeah, it was still a fantastic game. Very, very good game there. And Angola, for me... They were probably the better team on the day. I think they probably deserved the win. You can see right here, six shots, three on target, whereas um, the first half was very end-to-end, -end, you know, and then obviously, overall, I think they were a much better team. So, Martin and man, they put up a great, great effort, and obviously the major talking points with this game is how beautiful this game was. It was a great, great game to watch. Fantastic game, and um, really love this game, and I'm really hoping that with, I think with this win, Angola is in a great position. Great, great position to qualify from this group, and if they, because I believe in the final match day, I think they played Burkina Faso. That's going to be a good game. And goal versus Burkina Faso is going to be a great game. As for Martinia, it's pretty much hopeless for them because they pretty much have to win against Algeria. And we know Algeria is in a position. So Martinia, man, they put up a good effort, man. They were great in this tournament. You know, you got to give them a bad, even if they're going to probably finish on zero points. It's still a commendable effort for them. So shout out to Martinia. Fantastic game there. Moving on to the last game we got here is Tunisia 1, Mali 1. This was probably a very... I'll be honest with you, it was a boring game. It was a boring game, guys. I really am disappointed with Mali in particular because I do feel like Mali were the better team on the day, and I think they should have won this game. But at the same time, though, Tunisia is a team you can't write off, you know. And it was a great, great finish for that first goal. Sianko getting the goal there. Duamde getting that assist from that position to score is fantastic um, from that angle. And then uh, Tunisia had a really good spell of play right there. Really, really good play. Uh, Rafia equalized. Um, I feel like the goalkeeper should have done better, though, in my opinion. Al Abdi got the assist there. And yeah, for it was for you know, I just realized with both teams, both teams are great when it came to chance creation, but both teams just couldn't put, put the goal in the back of the net. You can see right here, only both, both teams only had one shot on target. You know, um, for me, Mali were coming closer to score. I think Sianko had the chance 79th minute, as you can see. Basuma in the 90th minute, that was a big miss. Uh, Sianko, Trior Duomda. Basuma, uh, Kulabali, Koyata, Diabate, and Juamba. As for Tunisia, you can see right here, guys, they didn't really create much after the goal. Um, they had some chances here and there, but ultimately just not good enough. And, and I think if you're Tunisia, man, you're happy with this point. You're happy with this point because I think for most of the game, they were dominated. Mali, you could see, had a much better midfield and control. It's just that they couldn't finish. They couldn't finish. For Tunisia, man, they large spells, couldn't control the game, and... For Tunisia, it's, it's very, very frustrating. But hey, at least they got a point, which keeps them alive. Because I believe if they had lost this game, they would have been in big, big trouble. So now on the final match day, they're going to play us against South Africa. We'll see what South Africa does tomorrow against Namibia. And for Mali, man, they're in a good position. Four points. I think they're the best team in this group. So they're going to probably top this group at this rate. And now it's a matter of, if can we get a result against um, Namibia? And which they will probably expect them to do so. So... It's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens here. And for Mali, man, as I said, man, that midfield was solid. Duamba, Sumeskia, Kulabali, Haidera. I mean, you could bring players like Basuma off the bench. You could play players in Nyakate, Sissoko. But yeah, for Mali, man, they just have to be better in the final third. That's the one thing I have concern with them. Because this team is great when it came to chance creation. It's just they couldn't put the ball in the back of the net, which is the big, big concern. But anyways, I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy this review. Um... At the AFCON rumor, guys, tomorrow we're going to have our live stream recapping match day two. Um, and it's going to be around 24 hours from the, by, by the time I'm making this video. So, hope I can see you guys then. So, yeah, everyone, guys, like and subscribe. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.